Well, protests in Alexandra in Johannesburg have triggered the South African Human Rights Commission to launch an investigation into funds that were supposed to have been used for the Alexandra Renewal Project, which uh, was uh, launched in 2001. Now, yesterday, Gauteng Human Settlements MEC Lebuhang Maile held a media briefing saying that, amongst other things, no single person could be held accountable for the 1.3 billion rand project. And Maile was supposed to be with us this morning, but instead he has sent uh, Mr. Fred Mokoko from his office uh, to come and talk to us about some of these issues. Thank you so much for coming through. Thanks very much. So let's start here. There seems to be um, some confusion as to the amount that was set aside for the Alexandra Renewal Project. Now, can we just bottom line this? Was there money set aside? How much was set aside? Okay, um, it's, a, it's a question that I will answer this way. One, government does projections in terms of the budget. That's why every year we get a budget uh, statement in October. And in February, we get the budget allocations. Now, what the policy statement by the president, uh, then Tabumbik, was that we will prioritize in the next seven years an allocation of 1.3 billion. So that's prioritization. It does not mean there was money that he allocated lying somewhere ring fenced, but it means because we have identified Alexander as an area that required intensive and focused service delivery, I was putting it under the presidential projects, uh, urban renewal projects, and it will receive an allocation of 1.3 billion. What does it mean in terms of government? It means those who are responsible for implementing government programs need to find the money somewhere. And how they find the money is to look at the programs that are already running. So there was already a program on building human settlements. There was a program on building schools. There was a program on building clinics. They then go to uh, Alexander and check what are the needs and then build a business case. Then they define whose responsibility it is to do certain things. So if it is roads, streets, uh, refuse removal and other things, that allocation will go through the municipal infrastructure grant or the urban settlements development grant uh, lately to the metropolitan municipality. And if it is for houses, the Department of Human Settlements will take over. Now, the needs in Alexander over and above anything were that of people who were staying in squalor conditions and they required a lot of uh, human settlements to be built. But they also required a lot of movement where there were no spaces. For spaces to be created, people had to be moved to Bram Fisherville, others to Deep Slot. Others uh, would have moved to Ivory Park on their own volition, others to Tembis. So that movement of people uh, resulted in the Department of Human Settlements being able to build in other areas for others, but not in the main Alexander. Okay, before we get to that, and I want to unpack a little bit more of what you've just said. Before we get to that, so how much has been spent on okay. the Alexandra Renewal Project to date? Okay, the, in terms of what the, the MEC gave yesterday, because education did not necessarily give us their figures, in terms of what the MEC gave yesterday, it's 1.4 billion. And uh, that 1.4 billion uh, may, may be more, given that the Alexander Renewal Project has not stopped. There are some services that they are still providing. Um, but in terms of the city's uh, mandate, they, are, they will speak for themselves. They are saying uh, they are closing the Alexander Renewal Project office. But in terms of our view, we think that it must continue. So, and, and, and the city were basically saying that they were concerned about um, allegations of corruption, widespread corruption and maladministration in this regard. So le let's talk about settlements, human settlements. You talk about the uh, de-densification project where people had to be relocated to places like Deep Sluit and uh, wherever else they were moved to. But in terms of uh, the uh, development there were 10 precincts that were identified and there was supposed to be um, a relocation of 10,000 households. Now, this project was launched in 2001. Has that happened and to what extent? 
Well, uh, let's first identify that um, the Alex and the reason why the Alex Renewal Project can't close is that you have a problem of um, uh, Alexander's original people, some of whom have title to the land. And the land dispute went as far as the courts stopping any development taking place in the main uh, area of Alexander. But you have people who are staying at the uh, Jekskay, for instance. When the Jekskay was de-densified, people were removed. Uh, those people were taken to Bramfish, as I indicated, Deep Slot. Now, this was a focus program. But the second thing is that people were built houses inside Alex. So you would have had um, Tsutsumani village, you would have had uh, those areas in the East Bank that I knew, the RDP World Cup, some of them were launched in 2010. In terms of the number 10,000, I will not be able to say, but there are more than enough people who have moved around. And in my view, it is even more than 10,000. That Some it, of the people it, it's who concerning speaking to you, Mr. Mukoko, with respect as a director general. I would expect you to have a handle on the figures, on the numbers, well, if well, nothing else. Well, I'm not the director general, but I can Outgoing give you. Outgoing director general, are you not? No, no, I'm not. Uh, so, I what is your title? Well, I'm the outgoing sp uh, chief of staff. Outgoing Out chief, chief of, of staff. staff in the office of the MEC. Okay. Now, this is what I can tell you. For instance, the M2 hostel development, there are 642 units that were built. Um, and this, this, that were meant to be built. Now, 642 units would benefit um, those people who stay within the hostel. There's, um, there's a development that took place in Far East Bank where 1,700 units were built. Those 1,700 units benefited more than um, the 10,000 people you are talking about. Because when you build one unit, it benefits um, an average of five people per family. So are you saying, therefore, that those numbers have been exceeded and therefore the project has um, basically outdone what it was supposed to do. You see, that's, that's where I'm saying we must be able to I understand the issues of Alexander as they are. Because what people say on the newspaper and on television and what is happening at Alexander are two things that you must understand differently. In as much as people from the core of Alexander are concerned, the core of Alexander has not changed because there still has to be an implementation of the statement of intent that the people signed in 2016. Which, uh, of course, the city of Johannesburg has distanced itself against it because they claim that they don't have money to fund it. It is not true, actually, for anybody to claim that they don't have money to fund a government program. We all have to raise business plans. And out of the business plans, we raise a business case and then we can get funding from the treasurer. So is it not prudent for the city of Johannesburg to say in the absence of accountability for some of the funds that may have been misappropriated with regard to the Alexandra Renewal Project that you put the brakes on the project and say, can we first account for all the money? It is actually counterproductive because every year there are audits that are done and the Auditor General gives a statement whether or not your books are correct, they are not correct whether you have a, an unqualified audit opinion with uh, matters uh, or you have a clean audit. So it doesn't make sense for anyone to claim that uh, we, we put the brakes unless it was their original intention to put the brakes in all the projects that do not make sense to them uh, and start something else that will make sense to them. Because you must also know that policy and space are political. Spatial transformation on its own, particularly of a place like Alexander, uh, it's a very big issue. Alexander is standing on prime land. Mm. And for years and years, um, people of Alexander have been tried to be moved elsewhere. Some are in Middlelands, some are in Deep Kloof. 
because of concerted efforts to ensure that the land is taken away. So it's a historical issue. But what the, the government, the democratic government did when it came in, it identified that there were specific things that had to be done to be able to empower the people of Alexander, including ensure that you build in Alexander for people to be able to grow within their space. So, so why are the residents of Alexandra up in arms at this stage? This is a project that was launched once again in 2001. We are now in 2019. I'm, I'm and, excited and, and, about and, that and question. And yet the residents are up in arms. So what has happened? No, I'm excited about that question. Because they're saying, we're not talking about Alex Renewal here. We don't want to talk about it. Uh, we saw it, it worked, we're happy about it. There are four key things that they are raising. One is that refuse is not collected every day. That's their case. They marched in February. They wanted to give the memorandum to the director of the city of Johannesburg in Sentin. She didn't show up. They came back in April and they are raising the same issues. Even up to today, they are still raising those issues. They are saying, no, everybody's excited talking about Alexander Renewal. They are trying to force us to talk about it. We don't want to talk about Alex Renewal. We want to talk about what is happening in Alexander. And what is happening is that there's an influx of people coming into Alexander. They are building everywhere, even where they are not supposed to build. We don't have pavements. They are building on top of people's graves at the cemetery. The Jackske River is now closing in because people are building illegal structures. And uh, we have been submitting to the uh, city that they must do building control, they must do uh, uh, bylaw enforcement. That is not happening. So they are crying that we don't have bylaw enforcement. But this is by no means a new problem. Well, you see, that's an interesting thing. Whether it's an old or a new problem. When the community protests about the issue, you don't look at whether it is old or new. If you want to bring change, you look at the problem and you resolve it. Because you are a government uh, that they are crying out to. If, if it was uh, an issue of you not being a government, you wouldn't worry about the issue. But because you are government, they are crying to you. So you must intervene. So let me ask you this. From your vantage point, was there any misappropriation of funds in the Alexandra new, uh, Renewal Project? And um, it's an interesting question again. Any misappropriation of funds in government um, goes for due process. There are instances where people would be investigated and findings found. So in this instance, we must allow for the process because the mayor has said there's been misappropriation. He who alleges must prove. And those so who are found if he to have who alleges has to prove, why then is the Gauteng Provincial Government also um, launched, uh, they've also launched their own investigation into this, as has the Human Rights Commission. But are you saying there are no funds missing here? Every cent is accounted for? No, 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 that is, what I'm, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you allege that there are funds missing, you can then prove that funds are missing. And those who are found to have uh, taken funds, who have enrich themselves at the expense of the poor, will be arrested. There must not be any ambiguity. So is that an admission, therefore, that there are funds that may have been misappropriated? No, Sakina. You see, this is the problem. Let's state facts. Somebody comes and alleges that there are funds that are misappropriated. If you're a government, you can't start by saying where. You are lying. You must say, okay, uh, let's test the theory. Let's uh, investigate, let's find out uh, if there are funds that have been misappropriated by who, where, how were they misappropriating them. Because what you also want to do in the findings is to prevent that from happening again. And um, we are living in a world where there are accounting um, standards that are proven that they can be able to find any money if it got lost, it didn't arrive where it is supposed to arrive. So we must not uh, conclude now that money was uh, misappropriated or it was not misappropriated. We support uh, Mr. Hemen Mashaba, in fact, uh, the mayor of Johannesburg, when he says no money has been misappropriated, let us investigate. 
let him investigate. And it's very interesting because the ambiguity continues. You know, uh, was uh, funds misappropriated? Were they misappropriated? No, they were not. Uh, you talk about almost an over-delivery uh, with regard to the housing project. And uh, hey, uh, the mayor, Herman Mashaba, says that there was an under-delivery on housing uh, in Alexandra. You see, and I'm saying it, it's very interesting there are people who are supposed to talk about these things because they were there. They must be afforded the opportunity to state the Alex problem. It's not new. It's not going to end now. And that is why it's logical that the, the, the provincial government indicate that we're interested, in, we're interested in extending all the urban renewal programs because in our view, they did not reach the levels that we want them to mm. reach. But, but I guess the, the point here is that all of these positions cannot be correct. It cannot be correct that there was an under-delivery under of housing in Alexandra as per uh, the Mayor Herman Mashaba. And on the other side, you are coming uh, from the provincial department and saying, no, actually we over-delivered. Those two positions cannot both be correct. But in terms of Herman Mashaba, uh, anybody, who, uh, anybody who came before he came into government did not deliver anything. No, but that's not what we're talking about. Uh, let's focus on the housing oh, issue. Oh yeah, we are focusing on it. Have you been to Alexander? Yes, you, I have been to Alexander. Those houses that are in uh, Marlboro and uh, in uh, East Bank, mm. they were not there. Yes, but, but, but we're not saying that no houses were built. So I'm saying village was you are there. stating two um, converging, divergent positions. Yeah. And it cannot be that both of them are correct. Either there was an under-delivery of houses in Alexandra or there was an over-delivery. Okay. So which yeah. was it? There was an, there was an over-delivery in relation to Alexander's new areas. There was a very little delivery in relation to Alex's old township. Mr. Mokoko, imagine I'm five years old. Please explain this to me in, 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 in layman's terms. I'm explaining it to, to a person who understands. And don't manipulate this information on behalf of other people. Understand it this way. There's the old Alexander township. That has not changed. It has not changed. In fact, even where we had open spaces, people had built a checks illegally, uh, which is what the people of Alexander are raising, that look, people are building in open spaces that were built by government, including in parks, in schools, and nobody wants to intervene. There's no bylaw enforcement, um, and as a result, we are experiencing other things, other social ills uh, that are related to what is happening. There is a lot of illegality, and the illegality must be solved by government, and they are very clear. They, are not, they have not come to the provincial government and say you have not uh, um, done well on the ERP. They went and said the Rikupa or Matlakala to see where refuse must be removed. And nobody talks about that. So old Alex, it's still the way it is, but there are new areas in Alex that benefited the people from Alexander. Now, what we need to talk about, and in clear terms, is those illegal structures that are there, that the uh, building control as well as uh, the municipality were supposed to remove. What is the position remove. on those? Are they going to be rebuilt? Who are, is going to rebuild them? Well, if, if uh, you have an irregular structure, in my understanding, the municipality must come in and intervene and say, you can't build an irregular structure. That is what they do anywhere in the townships. Why are they not doing it in Alexander? So if the mayor has built, said if those structures will be rebuilt. No, but, but you see... And I'm asking, what is the position right now from the human settlements perspective, from with, your department? With which money? Uh, because the, the municipality builds houses out of uh, money received from the provincial government called HSDG. Hence, I'm asking and you, what he, is the position And there? he applies for the HSDG on the projects that uh, are predetermined. Now, if he rebuilds this ones, from which money? What are the predeterminations that were done? What are the construction milestones that are forming part of the business plans? What are the spatial um, uh, geotechnical results that he has received? So in other words, those structures will not be rebuilt as per the Human Settlements Department? They are irregular.
so they will not be rebuilt. How do you build something that is irregular? Bottom line, will they be rebuilt or not? No, but it's the city that said it. You must ask Mr. But Masha. I'm asking you from the human settlements perspective, we will those structures, you just said, the money needs to come from you. Yes. Will those structures be rebuilt no, no, and no. from where you're sitting right now? From where I'm sitting? Yes. The plans that have been submitted does not include the demolishing of a... Uh, houses by the court order and then rebuilding them. So Human Settlements Department Gauteng will not be giving the money for those structures to be rebuilt? There is no authorization to give money for anything that is irregular. Government does not work that way. He has to follow the law and the law does not allow him to build irregular structures with money that is meant to build structures that are predetermined through the plans that they send and we give them the money from the budget. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you so much for your time this morning, uh, a Director General. But he said he was not of Sustainable Human Settlements, Mr. Fred Mukoko, talking to us about the Alexandra Renewal Project and the funds, uh, funds that have been disputed in that regard. And our apologies, uh, MEC Lebohang Maile was supposed to speak to us, but unfortunately he cancelled. So we're going to leave that one there for the time being. It's time for the news at 8.